Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome. I was very close to the camera. Hello! <laughs> How's everybody doing? It is Thursday, which means it is time for... Oh, the chair is creaky. It is time for the Monster Workshop. How are y'all doing? Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, I got weirdly off my schedule this week. I don't know how, but I didn't actually post a Monster of the Week last week. I had finished it. I think the patrons got it, but the regular community did not. And so then I realized that everything was kind of off. Since the uh, Demi Lich didn't go, that was supposed to be this week, then I decided we'll just roll it all back. I had missed this stream as well, which is our third demon stream. So I'm just kind of trying to recalibrate and get everything uh, back to normal. But that is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, that's right, it is another demon, uh, episode. We have a lot of demons to talk about. Um, I think this is the third of four episodes and streams about demons. Boy, there are a lot of them. Boy, most of them are not that interesting. I'm excited to be done with demons, but the problem is, is that when we're done with demons, we're right on to devils, right? I think we're, there's one episode in between where we're not going to talk about either, but yeah, it's a lot of demons, it's a lot of devils. Um... So this week we are tackling four demons uh, from the abyss. These are the upper mid tier demons. So the first episode were the were the, the the three weakest demons, and then the kind of uh, lower middle tier. So the Vrock and the Chasmi and the Barlgura and the uh, oh who's the other one? The Shadow Demon, right? And then this week we are talking about the upper middle tier. So these are the more powerful demons, but not quite the top of the food chain. And that means we're talking about the Hezrau, the Glabrezu, the Yaklal, and the Nalfeshni. Now, one thing I've wondered for a long time, I know that some of the devil names come from, like, Dante and sort of biblical sources, but I always wonder where they get these names from. Like, Glabrezu is such a good word, right? Yaklal, even Nalfeshni. All great. These great demon sounds. Where do they come from? You know, we 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 start with them the entire time. Hezrau, I could take or leave. Hezro, Hezrau, I'm not sure. But Glabrezu, Yaklal, and Nalfeshni are choice. Excellent. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is that we are going to go through... Hey, what's up, Hunter? Uh, we are going to go through each one of the demons one at a time. Rather than doing, you know... Uh, oh, I guess for the stream, it's basically the same. But we're going to do the, the whole Hezrau, the whole Glabrezu the whole Yaklal and the whole Nalfeshni, rather than sort of doing a summary and then fixing them all at the same time, right? So we're going to talk, first of all, about the Hezrau. My least favorite of these four. I think it's the least interesting. But I do have some interesting ideas for what we can do to make it better. Uh, so let's talk about what it is first, and then we will break down uh, how we want to improve it. So the Hezrau is a large fiend. It is uh, 16 AC, 136 hit points, 30 foot speed. It's got good strength, dex, con, but it's got bad intelligence and then average wisdom and charisma. It's got some good saves, good con, strength, and wisdom, normal demon resistances, um, no true sight, but it does have telepathy. Uh, it's got magic resistance, which is pretty common for demons at this level. Uh, it's got a stench power. Any creature that starts a turn within 10 feet of the Hezra must succeed on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or be poisoned until the start of its next turn. On a successful saving throw, the creature is immune to the Hezrau's stench for 24 hours. So, a stench power. Pretty basic. Um, oh, the Nalfeshni? Yes, there's definitely a Ganon vibe there, for sure. For sure. Uh, the Hezrau makes three attacks. One with his bite and with his claws. Bite attack deals 2d10 piercing. Claw attack deals 2d6. And then, of course, they've got a summoning demon variant. Uh, and that is the Hezrau. So, it's pretty boring and that's kind of my complaint with it not only is it sort of boring i think conceptually it's like a big like loathsome toad demon not only is it boring but i find that the hezrau is also you know pretty similar to the dretch so the dretch is a much lower cr monster but it you know i should get my php or i should get my monster manual but it's basically the same idea it's got like a, a toxic cloud thing it's kind of like a, a hooting biped that's the the kind of shock troops of the abyss and that's more or less how they describe the hezrau as well so there are two things we can do to fix it the first thing of course is to give it our abyssal hunger ability 
which we've been giving to all of the demons to give them some kind of a design consistency across the various different monsters. But I, there's, I was really struggling with trying to think of an interesting thing to do for the Hezrout because they haven't had a lot of particularly interesting powers in the past. Um, that's usually where I go to, to mine for ideas. The one thing I could find that was really that was sort of interesting, and this is a bit of a stretch in terms of how its powers work, is that they talked about an ability called the Dark Walk. I guess it was less of an ability, and it was more about it was more like an event, kind of like the 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 massive Modron March or whatever, right? The idea with the Dark Walk is that there was a period of the year where the Hezrau could take this almost like pilgrimage to the material plane. They could teleport easily onto onto the material plane, cause a bunch of chaos, and then retreat back again. Um, which is interesting, like, just purely as a means to teleport. I think that's kind of gives them a little bit more juice to make them more interesting. It's something that we'll see in more powerful demons, like the Nalfeshni has an action teleport. And while I think the idea is cool, I think it's kind of a, kind of a shitty action, right? Like, you could either make a multi-attack and make three attacks, or you could teleport, right, as an action. So I'm not proposing we give it a teleport as an action, but I do think some kind of ability to like, I wouldn't say move between shadows. I had a weird idea in the shower today about the uh, the Hezrau. I was thinking that like, boy, in third edition, they used to have a prestige class uh, called like the Blood Mage. Hey, what's up, M. Grant? Thanks for coming. Uh, Hunter Fox asks, what's their personality like? Maybe we can make powers around that. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I really wouldn't mind losing the stench, because I feel like that's something we have somewhere else. Maybe it needs to feed a debt every time it goes to the material plane. That's cool. Feels more like lore than mechanics to me. Uh, my thinking was, uh, there used to be a prestige class that is not really related to demons at all, right? Um, but the conceit is that it was like a blood mage. And it was really cool art in 3rd edition where uh, there was like, like it was two different uh, uh, like images, which was really cool. One on one page and one on the other. And it was like this blood mage leaping into a person in like a shower of blood. Like the, the, like the, the bottom half of them sticking out of one person and then their like torso and arms sticking out of a different person. Right? That they like teleported through blood across the battlefield and that was just to my like 11 year old brain that was the coolest thing i had could ever possibly imagine and so i like the idea of something like that where like they can teleport but it's in some ghastly horrible way so you could do i was thinking mechanically you could do a thing where it's like they if they deal damage to a target as a bonus action they can teleport you know probably a short range probably something like 30 feet uh, to another target, you know, who, who doesn't have all their hit points, right? So it's like a blood hop. They can go from one place to another place. And since they're sort of toads, the idea of them, like, leaping. Yeah, and Grant says Misty Step or Dimension Door. Yeah, Plant Walk with Through Bodies. Exactly, exactly. There's something about that felt very gross and weird. So I like that, I, but I'm not ruling out other stuff if we want to try to, like, really spruce up the Hezrau. Um, Hunter's Idea says it needs to feed a debt every time it goes to the Material Plane. And once filled, they unlock a new ability. That's interesting. Maybe replace demon summoning with that. But, like, if they've done this, then they have some extra power. I don't know what that power would be, but I'm, I'm open. I think that, that could be pretty cool. Um, so we're going to hop over to the Hezrau's stats. And we're going to put in Abyssal uh, Hunger. I want to add this Blood Walk thing. And then maybe as I'm doing that, we can brainstorm how this kind of debt power might work. Yeah, definitely a bonus action. Yo, David, what's up? I weren't sure if you were going to make it today. I know you have that D&D &D game. Um, welcome, welcome. So let me pull up. I keep forgetting that I need to copy over the stats uh, for the um, Abyssal Hunger, which is our new demon power that we've given them. Uh, pretty soon, we have one more episode of Demons, and then uh, I'll actually have to release these for the patrons, which is, uh, I've been like putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. So it's catching up with me. We've got one more demon episode. Uh, and that's cool. It's got the uh, the Merilith and the Garistro and the Baylor, uh, which sucks because I, I recorded a version of that the other day and then Audacity got corrupted for some reason. Um, yo, yo. Okay. So let's type this out. Um, Abyssal Hunger. Oh, I am using a site called tetra cube uh they have a really good uh, stat block generator that i that i enjoy um so uh yeah go ahead and give them a give them a, a peek i enjoy them there i'm not paid to say this i just think it's a cool website that lets you do monster stat blocks 
Okay, uh, when the Hezrau uh, reduces a creature that isn't a fiend to zero hit points, roll 1d20 on a 1 through 19. The Hezrau. Ooh, I will need my. Uh, I will need my monster manual. Let me go and grab that because we gotta uh, improve the their type of demon. Uh, yeah, we're doing Baylor. Uh, not today. I think next week is the Demi Lich, but the week after that is yes, uh, the Baylor. Ooh, uh, M Grant says, "What about a reflavor of Hunter's Mark?" That's cool. I kind of like it being about their like uh, their wounds, their blood, right? Because then they'd have to mark two targets to teleport through. But it definitely is a bonus action, which I think has kind of that Hunter's Mark idea. Um, yeah, all right, I'm going to grab the uh, the monster manual. I'll be back in half of a second. Um, yeah, these are good ideas, guys. Keep, keep them coming. Okay. Monster manual. All right, I just want to make sure I have it on hand because it, I find it to be useful. Uh, all right, the Hezrau gains. So we're going to do 66 temporary hit points. Hit points. Advantage on all attack rolls for one minute and their melee attacks deal an extra i think we said uh 3d4 fire damage on a 20 the hezrau instantly transforms into a type 3 demon okay so let me see what that would be um okay so demons demons Demon, 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 demon types. Well, the Hezra is a type two, so would be, yeah, a type three demon would be a Glabrezu or a Yaklal. Glabrezu, a Glabrezu, or a Yaklal. Cool, there's Abyssal Hunger. Add ability. So I think I'm gonna kill Stench. I think Stench is boring. Um, ooh, uh, they, they can mark an ally too. That's kind of cool. So how would that work? That would be a bonus action. They can mark a target. Um, then as a move action, they can teleport. That, that That's my confusion about it, is that it's like, if you have to mark them as a bonus action, then you have to, can you just teleport then as a reaction, as a free action? Like, I kind of think it's gotta be the teleporting as the bonus action. And I think stacking two bonus actions on top of each other is a little... Uh, by the time they would get a chance to use that, might be a little corner case. I'm gonna write it out the way I imagined it, but I, I'm I'm open to I'm open to redoing it if that makes more sense. I'm gonna do blood walk uh, as a bonus action. The um, Hezrau can oh here we do let's do this when the Hezrau deals damage to a target. I kind of assumed, Hunter, that it would um, it would start uh, at full with the new form. So it it should be like uh, it should be like a disaster, right? If if a demon drops somebody and then they roll the twenty and they turn into a new kind of demon, that should be like an encounter ending, like oh shit moment, right? Because the demon has to drop you and then it has to roll a natural twenty. It should be a complete like sea change in that moment. When the Hezrau deals. I don't love it as an action because I think that limits their ability to to move around, right? I, I don't mind it dealing damage though. That's kind of cool. Yeah, let me type it out my way, but I, th I think yours your way could work too, M. Grant. When the Hezrau deals damage uh, to a creature, yeah, exactly, right? When they transform, it's a big problem, big problem. Um, to a, uh, with a melee attack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Final Fantasy level up. <laughs> My final form. You know, it it should change the entire nature of the encounter. Hopefully, like you might be high enough level that that's not that big of a deal, right? Like going from a, you know, maybe the the demon gets lucky and drops you very early, and though it didn't really take that much damage, like, but it should feel like oh shit, right? Um, when the Hesperide deals damage to a creature with a melee, I don't like that wording. Maybe maybe I'm maybe you're right. As a bonus action. Yeah, maybe let's do it your way. I just think it's like, it's confusing to mark it, and then, like, that's two different powers, right? That, like, I want I want Bloodwalk in one power, and if it's an action to do it. 
So it, let, let's let's pros and cons this. So I my original idea was that when the Hezrau hits with a melee attack, right, it can then teleport up to it can teleport up to thirty feet to a space within five feet of another creature who is not at full hit points. That was what I was imagining. So it's like if I hit you with my claws, I create it, like rip open a door and then jump through. M. Grant's suggestion is to do it as a mark, which is the benefit of which is that you can target allies. But then if you jump through them, you damage them. That's kind of cool because they're demons. Like, they don't care, right? But then from the action economy standpoint, that's either a bonus action to mark and then a bonus action to jump. Or it's a bonus action to mark and then an action to jump. But it means you have to, like, ooh, mark up to three creatures? I actually don't hate that, M. Grant. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty good. So, uh, then there are two different abilities, right? Is there is there some... Because I, I love the idea of them being able to jump through. Is there some other thing that, like, having a mark does? Because what, what I don't like is, is, you know, we call this blood mark or whatever. Um... As a bonus action, the Hezrau can mark up to, I think it could be a reaction, but I want it to be something that the Hezrau can proactively do on its turn. But if I got clawed, I won't need to move toward me, I'm in melee. Oh, but to a different target is what I'm saying, right? So it's the idea is that they're very mobile. So it's like if if I can get to the, my thought with it was that like if the Hezrau can get to the to the fighter, right? The fighter gets in the Hezrau's way. The Hezrau scratches them. If the wizard is at anything less than full hit points, then they go right. They teleport immediately there. Um, as a bonus action, the Hezrau can mark up to three targets, up to three creatures. I don't hate it as a reaction either can mark up to three creatures within 30 feet that it can see. So I don't think it has true sight. So you've got to be able to actually see him. Um, the, I think we can call this blood walk. The Hezrau, as part of its movement, But the, the problem with it being part of the movement is that then it, you're not really saving anything, right? That, like, it's just preventing you from taking opportunity attacks, I guess. Whereas if, if, if it's part of a bonus action, it's in addition to movement, right? Like, they're bopping around the battlefield, which, like, I kind of prefer that. You can mark up to three creatures and then 30 feet of it that it can see. Ooh, I kind of like that, David. Yeah. Maybe just instead of taking the second claw attack, it can teleport. Yes. Yep. I think that's it. I think that's exactly it. I think it's like this. I think we go... We don't make it a trait. Yeah. I think David's 100% right. So we lose a summon demon. And we go blood walk. We make this an action. And we change the way multi-attack is worded. Um, the Hezra makes three attacks. Uh, makes up to three attacks. One with its bite and two with its claws. Alternatively, it can forego one claw attack to use its blood walk power. Good thinking, David. That's good. Yep. So then that's the new multi attack, right? And then blood walk is and technically like an action uh, to, to use blood walk. And then blood walk is the Hezrau teleports up to what I like about this. There's like a subtle thing in there where the Hezrau has to be next to a target, right? If the Hezrau is standing next to a creature that doesn't have all of its hit points. No, these, yeah, these are all good suggestions. Like, none of these are bad, right? Like, I think that's the thing about this, is that, like, all of these work. 
these are all very legitimate ways to mechanize it. I'm just trying to find the one that works best for sort of the our version of the Hezrael. You guys are all good designers, all good dungeon masters. I believe that all of your suggestions are very solid. The Hezrael teleport. So like, how do we then package it with the... Ooh, you know what? If it hits with a claw attack, that's what it is. Two of its claws. If it hits with one claw attack, with one... If it hits with either a bite or a claw attack, it can substitute, if it hits with either, it can substitute the third attack with its blood walk. There's some, there's some monster that has this kind of a thing, right? Like it can forego that. I just want to get the specific wording. Um, two claw attacks. Bite one with its stinger. Somebody's got something like this. Where it's like if it if it hits, it can do something else. Monster with multi-attack that does that. No, not the ooze. Not with that. This is fascinating the television, I'm sure. Um not the Quagath Spore Servant, the mummy doesn't have it. Mind Flayer doesn't have multi-attack. Somebody's got it. There's a particular kind of phrasing that I'm looking for, you know. Makes either three melee attacks. No. 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 Come on, somebody's got this. Giant Hyena does that, I'm Grant? That would surprise me. Or are you just like celebrating the, the existence of a giant hyena? No, that doesn't have the, uh, Giant Hyena doesn't have uh, multi-attack. Sure, but that's based on a kill. We've already got it having a kill power. I, what I need is, sorry, I, I'm looking for multi-attack that does like, it can replace one of its attacks with, is, is it the vampire? If the vampire is one where it's like, it can, it can, it can not deal damage and instead grab a target if it hits, is I think how the vampire has it phrased. Um, so this is such a dumb thing to care about. I just want to get the wording right. Vampire makes two attacks, only one of which can be a bite. Instead of dealing damage, the vampire can grapple the target. What if we do it? Ooh, Yagnaloth. Oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna pull that one out. Um, if it's not, it's not an attack and forego the wording is similar in intent. Yeah. I wonder if we do it this way, if we go like, um, maybe a simpler way to do it, not even calling it blood walk, right? If we just go into the claw, like if we just if we just go back to makes three attacks, one with the claw, one bite, and two with its claws, right? Action, and then claws go in here and say instead of dealing damage, right? But then it has to hit. Hmm. God, why this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. All right, I'm gonna look up the Agnoloth. I'll see if that's got the wording that I want. Um, one moment, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Wow, this is like we're spending 25 minutes on the wording of the Hezrael because I I do want the I do want it to be a separate power because otherwise I think it's like we're just making the Hezrael like almost like more boring. Yagnoloth. 5e. Well, these are the ones with the like effed up arm. Oh, crazy. Makes one massive arm attack and one electrified touch attack, or it makes one massive arm attack and teleports before or after the attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, malformed Kraken. These are all interesting monsters. I mean, I think we could definitely use the Yagnoloth, right? Um, 
let me look at the malformed Kraken. I actually don't see... Oh, I see. Yeah, makes three tentacle attacks. One of them can be replaced with a bite attack. Oh, you know what it is? It, it It's like... um. Yeah, it might even be a little bit like that. This could work, yep. And I think it might also be. Um, is it like there's somebody that's if it hits with both, it can do this attack, right? Like, I think maybe it used to be a fourth edition thing, but okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Um, the Hezrau makes. Thank you for your patience. It's so dumb. Um, one of them can be replaced with Blood Walk if it hits with one. If it I think, I think it has to hit first. If it hits with one attack, the next attack can be replaced with Blood Walk. If it hits with an attack, with an attack. So it's like, if it hits with the third attack, then it can't, right? Because it needs to spend that action. But if it hits with the first or second attack, then it can go, right? Cool. That's what I want. Yep. Thanks everyone. Sorry that was so stupid. Um, the Hezrau teleports up to how do they put it here in the Agnoloth? Magically teleports along with any equipment it's wearing or carrying. Magically teleports along with any equipment it is wearing or carrying. Up to, and we'll say it's it's a shorter range, up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space within five feet of a creature. Uh, boy, yeah, this is very specific. <laughs> um, the Sahogan, Sahogan has also the wording I need here. Sahogan. By the end of the podcast, I'm going to know, I'm going to have each stat block for each monster memorized. Um... Uh, of a creature that doesn't have all its hit points. Within five feet of a creature that doesn't have all its hit points. That doesn't have all its hit points. Uh, that creature must make a DC... What's the appropriate... What's the, the stench DC? DC 14 constitution save. Constitution save or take, what do we think is an appropriate amount of damage here? 4d6 uh, on a failed save. On a failed save, the target takes 4d6. <laughs> what would that be? Piercing damage? What kind of damage is that? If something explodes through you. Bludgeoning? Piercing? I think it's piercing. Ugh. <laughs> or half as much on a, f on a successful save. Successful save. Ugh. Yuck. If there's a different type of damage, let me know. I guess it could be necrotic, maybe. Or fire. I kind of think piercing is grosser, but I'm, I'm open to be persuaded on that. Okay, I'm going to lose stench. I don't think it adds anything. I think that's plenty for our, our Hezrau. Yeah, cool. Did it. Nice. Thanks for <laughs> going down that rabbit hole with me. Forces? Ooh, Force is maybe good. After I've just downloaded it. Force? Yeah, let's do Force damage. You're right. You're right, David. You're right. Ah, <sighs> David. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm cool with Force. I think Force makes sense. Alrighty, that is the Hezrau. Nice job. Let's do the Glabrezu. Now, the Glabrezu is a classic Dungeons & Dragons demon. This is a weird, tall, wolf-headed, four-armed, crab, pincered monster. I was surprised to discover that they are usually or supposed to be portrayed as like manipulators, right? Who like uh uh deceive and cast spells. That was a surprise to me, uh cuz I you look at them and you don't you know necessarily think that. Um but let's let's talk about mechanically how they work and then we'll talk about how we're going to fix them. 
because I will fix them. Uh, Large Fiend, um, AC 17, 150 hit points, 40 foot speed. Uh, great stats all across the board. Um, good save, strength, con, wisdom, and charisma. Normal demon resistances. This one does have true sight. Uh, it does have um, uh, telepathy. And then it's got innate spell casting. So at will, darkness, detect magic, and dispel magic. So dispel magic is kind of cool at will. Darkness is okay. I'm not a big fan of the darkness spell just because I think it creates confusion. Um, and detect magic sucks. Who cares? Um, and then once per day, it's got confusion, fly, and power word stun. A little random, but okay. It's also got magic resistance. And then for its actions, it has a multi-attack. The Glabrezu makes four attacks, two with its pincers and two with its fists. Alternatively, it makes two attacks with its pincers and casts one spell. Which I think is kind of cool. Um, the pincers, you know, hit and they grapple, and then the fists punch. And of course, it's got a variant demon summoning. So for me, the Glabrezu is allegedly a manipulator, right? But there's nothing in its stats that suggests that it's a manipulator. Like, it doesn't have... It's like, charisma's okay. It's got 16 charisma, you know, but it's it's its fifth best uh, ability score. It doesn't have proficiency in any skills that you would use to manipulate or tempt someone. Um, and even as, like, a spellcaster, confusion, okay, but it's once per day. Fly, okay. Power word stun, okay. Darkness, detect magic, and dispel magic. Like, there's a little bit of kind of like a wizard component here, but not as much as you would really want. And then it's just pincers and fists, right? So, I don't hate the idea of a demon that looks like a horrible beast, but is more cunning than um, violent, right? Like, there's something interesting about the confluence there. I think you, I think you could get away with something cool. The problem is, is that it's not supported mechanically, right? Uh, True Sight is pretty good, although you see True Sight on most demons at this point. The vast majority of demons beyond the Glabrezu have True Sight. Um, so it's cool, and I'm definitely we're definitely going to keep it, but we're not going to, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that necessarily helps its core concept. So my thinking is that it's got, like, my, my idea is you almost want to tie it to something like the Etten or the Chimera, in that this is a monster of sort of cross purposes, right? Like one half of it, literally one half of its of its arms, of its four arms, are these kind of like clever spell casting manipulator arms, right? Where the other half are these giant, you know, clumsy, violent crab pincers. So I like the idea of saying that the Glabrezu kind of has two modes, right? That like when you first encounter a Glabrezu, it's in sort of like manipulator mode, right? It's there to like uh uh can tempt you and and manipulate you and it's all about spells and charisma and stuff right but i think if the glabrezu gets bloodied if it gets below half hit points then it goes into berserker mode right maybe every time it takes damage it's a chance that the sort of like inner demon comes out um yeah, David says, they seem like demon police officers almost. Stun and bring the demons in, but I doubt demons have police. Yeah, I, that's that's the problem, is that, like, I love the demons as, like, ravenous, you know, bloodthirsty monsters. But then anything beyond just, like, a, a ravenous, bloodthirsty monster, you know, not that interesting. It doesn't really make sense in the concept. Like, later on, we're going to talk about the Merolith in another episode, and they're, like, these generals, right? Even then, Elfeshni has this to some degree. And it's like, right, but the demons don't care. They don't listen. They don't, they, if they fall into a hierarchy, it's out of fear of being destroyed, right? It's not about respect for law or anything like that. So my thinking with the Glabrezu is that this is a creature that it is inherently chaotic, but it's almost trying to put on more of like a genteel aspect, right? Because it thinks it'll be able to manipulate you better and cause more chaos that way. Now, beyond the Berserk power, which I think is cool, but um, uh, I don't think... Uh, I think we can lift off of like, the Flesh Golem. I don't know a great way to make the Glabrezu have this, right? Bounty Hunter is cool. I don't hate Bounty Hunter. Um, but again, it feels like that's not... The Abyss doesn't have those, you know? So my question is, how do we make the Glabrezu more manipulative? Because I think we can do Berserk. That's not too hard. I'm going to put a... First of all, I'm going to put Abyssal Hunger in. Um, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about, uh, uh, Berserk. But if y'all want to talk to me a little bit about, like, what kinds of powers we would want to give the Glabrezu 
in order to make it more manipulative, right? To kind of play into that. Like, what kinds of cool spells should it have um, if it's kind of the wizard of demons, right? When the Glabrezu reduces a creature that isn't a fiend to zero hit points, roll 1d20. On a 1 through 19, the Glabrezu gains 66 temporary hit points, advantage on all attack rolls for one minute, and their melee attacks deal an extra 3d4 fire damage. On a 20, the Glabrezu instantly transforms into a, I think this is a type four demon. Because I believe it's already a type three. Ooh, shapeshift is cool. I don't hate shapeshift, but I, I sort of like the idea. And that's, the, yeah, David makes more, no one would be like, oh, I should trust this frightening demon. I'm sure this can only be great for me. And that was my initial thought too, but I kind of think it's interesting if they are f stuck in this form, right? Um, I'm not opposed to shapeshift. We think shapeshift is cool. Then let's put shapeshift in there. But I was sort of drawn to the idea that like they're forced to manipulate, even though they have this this very <laughs> like untrustworthy shape. Yeah, it was one of my initial thoughts too. Right? It's like it's so monstrous. Um, what am I looking at? Oh yeah, I'm looking at the different types of demon. So a type four demon, I would assume, would be a an Alfeshni. Interesting. Uh, tr instantly transforms into a because now Feshni is the only type four demon. Um, into a now Feshni. Cool. Uh, so that's abyssal hunger. Add ability. Put it at the top. Um, now I'm gonna put berserk in there. A glamour. Ooh, maybe like an illusion. Yeah, I like I like illusion because I feel like a shapeshift feels too easy it feels like if they can if they can make illusions almost like disguise self right but if you touch them then you would know right or you know i'm not opposed to it being shapeshift if, if there's like some you know uh some some limits on it right they can turn into a number of animals kind of like the imp right like what if he did like a or the the closet what if he did like an upgraded version of the closet's shapeshift right i think that's cool Ooh, yeah what if the glabrezu is like a powered up closet that's cool i like that what am i looking up here oh i'm looking up the golem for berserk Ooh, yeah if we do that let's look at because the the yeah our um sorry i'm blathering our closet has a cool tempting ability I think the Glabrezu and the Quasit are related somehow. I think that's cool. Okay, Quasit has a thing that we designed called Tempt, recharge uh, five, six. One humanoid within 30 feet of the Quasit, uh, one humanoid within 30 feet of the Quasit can see must make a DC 10 wisdom saving throw or be charmed for one minute. A creature that has the Quasit as its familiar has disadvantage on the save. While charmed by the Quasit, the target can take an action or use their movement, but not both. The target can end the charm by attacking one creature that the Quasit designates, right? So the idea is that it tempts you towards evil. I think that's really cool. Yes. Um, okay. But first we're going to go and look at Berserk uh, for the Golem. Golem. Okay, Flesh Golem has Berserk. So right now it's that there's a chance it goes Berserk... When the golem starts a turn with 40 hit points or fewer, roll a d6. On a d6, the golem goes berserk. So I'm going to do instead. Uh, whenever the Glabrezu is hit by an attack, roll 1d6. On a 6, the Glabrezu goes berserk. On each of its turns while berserk... The Glabrezu attacks the nearest creature it can see. If no creature is near enough to move or attack, move to and attack, move to and attack, 
the Glabrezu attacks an object with preference for an object smaller than itself. Um, once the Glabrezu goes berserk, I actually might remove this. Ah, that's fine. Goes berserk. It continues to do so until it is destroyed. Uh, the Glabrezu goes berserk. Berserk for one minute or until it is destroyed. I'm still stuck on the bounty hunter aspect, even though the demons are more chaos than planners. And that's the idea with the um, the Glabrazio is that it has it has like uh, a second half, right? It's almost like a lycanthrope, like it turns into a monster, right? That like it has the the like imp quasi intelligence, but if you do enough damage to it, then they go mindless, right? Okay, uh, that is berserk. It's like deliberately in contrast to that. Okay. So in terms of tempting, shape changer, uh, the quasi can use its action to polymorph into a beast form that resembles a bat, a centipede, or a toad, or back into its true form. Its statistics are the same in each form, except for the speed change is noted. Any equipment it is wearing or carrying isn't transformed. It reverts to its true form if it dies. Is there a monster that has like an illusion disguise that isn't a shape change? I don't know if there is. I want to put Tempt in here. Um, what other kinds of spells should it have? Um, one humanoid within 30 feet that the Glabrezu can see must make a DCX. What would that be? Is there spell casting? In save is... DC 16, DC 16, intelligence, saving throw, or be charmed for one minute. Obviously, if your table doesn't use charmed, you don't have to use that word, but a creature that summoned the Glabrezu has disadvantage on the save. While charmed by the Labrezu. Uh, you know, for M Grant's sake, we're gonna say be tempted. While tempted by the Glabrezu, the target can make can take an action, can take an action, or use their movement, but not both. The target can end the temptation by attacking one creature. Glabrezu designates. I like that. Add action. Cool. Lamia. Oh, does Lamia have a shapeshift? That's a, an illusion. That would be awesome. Lamia, Lamia, Lamia. Oh, which is it has just has disguise self as a spell. Yeah, that's fine. We just put it in. I was imagining it being uh, like a power like like polymorph, but it, yeah, that actually makes tons of sense. If we go disguise self, um, yeah, cool, good thinking, my friend. Thank you. Any humanoid form, any humanoid or beast form, any beast or humanoid form? Because I'm thinking about like Black Philip. Right? Oh, that's that's a devil. Yeah. Let's just do. Eh, let's do beast. I think that's cool. Any beast or humanoid form. Although, yeah. Let's just do humanoid. Humanoid. What if it was any beast form? That's kind of cool. Any beast form. So yeah, it's it's more like a grown up version of the uh, of the closet rather than humanoid. Yep. At will. Um. What else do we think? I think detect thoughts is a pretty good one. If we're gonna be doing some manipulation, detect thoughts, disguise self, suggestion.
Probably not suggestion at will. Yeah, Black Phillip. That's kind of what I was thinking, right? That like taking like that it can only be animals. I think that's neat. So like it's still a little bit <laughs> exactly. I wish to live deliciously. Um, God, that's a good movie. That's a really good movie. I wish the North one was as good as that movie. Like the North one is good. It's not that good. Um, what are some other good manipulation spells? I think suggestion can be a once per day. A Lamia, Emgrim. I've never run a Lamia. I ran the old version, the fourth edition version of the Lamia, which is kind of like a scarab mage, which I think is cool, but I've never run that version before. Um, I don't hate confusion. We can keep confusion. Let's do suggestion. Power words done feels like too much. Um, ooh, what about dream? I want one more at will. Dispel magic, maybe? Like they had before. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Detect thoughts, dispel magic. Yeah, there we go. I'm into it. Cool. Glorazu. Yeah, more of a tempter. Darkness, detect magic, dispel magic. Oh, shoot. What? It didn't get updated. Oh, I see, because we didn't put it in. Oh, uh, uh, Gesh. Could be Gesh. I think, I think Gesh, you have to want to do it. I think Suggestion kind of plays into that, right? Tech Thoughts. Any beast form to spell magic. Oh, that should also be italicized. There we go. Add action. Or add ability. Yeah, there we go. Cool. I like it. Lorezu. All right. Um, save that guy. Okay. Nice. Glabrezu done. Moving on. All right. The Yawklaw is next. The Yawklaw is, I think, probably the weirdest demon in the book. The Yawklaw is a CR 10 medium fiend, and it looks like it has three forms. It can appear as a giant spider. It can appear as a, uh, usually a female drow, or it can appear in its true form um, I guess technically it's four forms. Uh, it can appear in its true form, which is a a tall, sort of like melted candle monster with a big single eye, kind of like a roper made of wax with like tendrils and stuff. Uh, it can also turn into gas. They are like the handmaids of Lolf is the idea. Um, and so they're they're like demons that Lolf like handpicked, right, to become uh, her handmaidens. And I think they are just fucking weird. Um, I don't hate the design, but I don't think that they make sense with what they are. So let's talk about the Yawklaw, and then we can go from there. So CR 10, AC 15, 136 hit points. Um, it's got pretty good stats. Yeah, its, it's ability scores are pretty solid. Um, good saves, dex, con, wisdom. It's got deception and insight, both very good. Normal demon resistances... Um, it's got uh, a bunch of languages. Dark Vision, not True Sight, interestingly. Um, at least I don't think so. Shape Changer, so it can use his action to polymorph into a form of a, that resembles a female drow or a giant spider or back into its true form. Um, it's got Magic Resistance, it's got Spider Climb, it's got Innate Spell Casting, and it's got Web Walker. Um, innate Spell Casting has Detect Thoughts and Web, and then once per day it's got Dominate. Uh, and then action wise, it's got two melee attacks. And this is the part that I hate the most. It's got slam, but then it's like in spider form, it's a bite. And so it's melee attack plus six. It hits for this much, but it's 10 feet if they're in demon form. It's one target. It's this much damage. And then it's uh, it's actually piercing in spider form. And then for some reason, they both have a pile of poison damage. I guess they, the conceit is that like the tendrils of the thing are poisonous. Um, and then it has a big complicated mist form power uh, that is sort of a combination of gaseous form and like cloud kill where it turns into a gas and then it chokes you. So the idea of Lolf having her own kind of subclass of demons, I think it's kind of cool. I feel like they could have done more kinds of demons like that. Like 
I guess you could argue that the Garistro is kind of like a Baphomet demon, but like what happens when a demon lord or an evil god maybe plucks out some demons from the abyss and reshapes them to serve their will, right? And so that, that's what you get with the Yaklal. To me, it's like the fact that it's chaotic evil is kind of weird if it serves Lolf. Like it feels like it's more of a devil. That it might be the, the exception that it's like a neutral evil or a lawful evil demon because it's been sculpted by Lolf, but whatever. But my, my big problem is that, like, this thing is trying to be four different creatures, right? It is trying to be, a, like, a humanoid, like a drow, a spider, a weird melted candle monster, and it's trying to be, like, a, a cloud of gas. And I think, I think that as cool as the image of the candle is, it's one too many. I think you could make a spooky evil spider that doesn't need to turn into a weird blob of candle wax... Because it doesn't get any powers as a blob of candle wax that it doesn't have as a spider, right? Like, magic resistance, spider climb, web walker. Like, I have a tough time imagining this, like, roper walking on webs. Like, spider climb, I guess, right? If it's kind of like a like a candle, it could sprout from the side. But, like, web walker, get out of here. What are you talking about? You know, it's not an ooze. It's like a weird pillar. So my fix for the Yawklaw is just to say it's a spider, it's just a big, horrible, demonic spider. There have been other spiders in the past. I don't I don't know if the Bebelif is a demon or a devil. The Retriever is definitely a devil. But let's do a demonic spider. Like, wh why not? That doesn't seem like a like a hard option to me. And I think you can keep Shape Changer. It can turn into a drow. You could probably even keep Mist Form and say that it's like a weird, extra poisonous spider. I don't know, like, what that would mean power-wise beyond the fact that you would just obviously give it Abyssal Hunger, and then B, like, reduce the, uh, reduce the, um, the, like, simplify the attack from a slam to just a bite. Maybe you say that it can shape change into a normal giant spider as well, right? That, like, it, it is sort of a demonic-looking spider, but its bite attack is the same in both forms. Um, I feel like as a concept, it's still missing something. Like, what makes this spider scarier than a normal giant spider like obviously it's a demon it's got abyssal hunger and mist form and stuff is it sort of composed of like goop in the same way right like is it made of that same vile toxin that the yaklal is right something like that could be cool so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna put in abyssal hunger i'm gonna change shape changer i'm gonna change slam if you guys have an idea for like an extra kind of angle we could do on a big demonic spider let me know. I think that'd be cool. But this one might be a pretty simple fix. Uh, so here we go with Abyssal Hunger again. Um, I could go copy it, but I like giving y'all a chance to uh, brainstorm while I'm typing this up. Uh, okay. When the Yawklaw reduces a creature that isn't a fiend to zero hit points, roll 1d20. On a 1 through 19, the Yawk Lol gains 66 temporary hit points. Advantage on all attack rolls for one minute, and their melee attacks deal an extra 3d4 fire damage. Ooh, I like the idea that, like, it doesn't have the last thing. That, like, if it turned into a Nalfeshni, it would break Loth's control. So Loth would remove that. Ooh, yeah, let's let's just, yeah, let's keep it, but that might be a lore thing. On a 20, the Yawklaw instantly transforms into a Nalfeshni. Cool. Uh, that is an ability. And that's going to go up here. Well, they have a lot going on. Uh, shape changer. Or an ordinary spider. Or an ordinary spider. A giant spider. How does the, um, how does the Deva do it? Because the Deva can turn into any beast. Um, Deva, 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 under angels. Okay. 
magically polymorphs into a humanoid or a beast that has a challenge rating equal to or less than its own or back to its true form. Um... You use the action to polymorph into a form that resembles a female drow or a giant spider. Back to its true form. Its statistics are the same. It reverts if it dies. In its new form, the Yawclaw retains its game statistics. ability to speak but it's AC movement modes what if we say like there's a drow like a priestess in here right what if we limit it and say it can only turn into a drow priestess rather than just like any humanoid right or a female drow yeah a drow priestess of wolf Ah, get out of here. Sorry, I'm trying to balance my monster manuals. I'm sure it's super exciting to watch. Um, into a drow priestess of Lolf. Lolf or a giant spider. Uh, but it's AC movement modes. Strength. Dexterity. And special senses are replaced by those of the new form and it gains any statistics and capabilities abilities except class features legendary actions and lair actions that the new form has but that it lacks Or any drow below its CR. Yeah. Resembles a drow of CR 10 or lower. Or a giant spider. Cool. Uh, so that's the ability to this shape changer. Add ability. Cool. Um, and then we're going to change the attack to just be bite um, plus six to hit one target um, 1d6 plus two piercing damage plus yeah there we go um, add action and then say the Yaklal makes two bite attacks while in spider, spider, while uh, in its true form, while in spider or its true form, while in its spider or true form, the yawk lol makes two attacks. Yawk lol makes two bite attacks. Okay, that's action. Um, Mist form, I think we can leave. The kill slam. Toxic Mist reverts to his true form. Any equipment is wearing or carrying is also transformed. Reverts to his true form. Dies. Mist form is incapacitated. Can't speak. Has a flying speed of thirty feet. Can hover and can pass through any space that isn't airtight. Has advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws, and is immune to non magical damage. While in misform, the Yakal can enter a creature's space and stop there. Each time that creature starts its turn with the Yakal in its space, must succeed. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's cool. All right, that's a little boring, but I think I mean not boring, but oh yeah, do we want to change the spellcast. I think the spellcasting's fine. Yeah, I just think that makes it a little bit more. It's it's clearer. It's a clearer monster. Okay, cool. Uh, we have one left, everybody, and that is the Nalfeshni. Oh, I might get up and stretch for a minute, and then I'll be back uh, to do our last monster. Uh, the last demon that we have today, and that's the Nelfeshni. I'm gonna get up and stretch for like a minute. Oh, my legs are falling asleep. and get some more water, go to the bathroom, and I'll be back in five minutes, everybody. Let me um, unpin this. Uh, five minutes, folks, and I will see you in five. Okay.
Hey everybody, sorry about that. I am back. I realized I probably should have put the music on while I was gone, but I forgot to do that, so it was eerily silent as I was uh, in the bathroom. Uh, Alright, we are back. We have one last demon to do then. That is the Nalfeshni. The Nalfeshni is the sort of Ganon-looking uh, motherfucker right here to our side. I believe that's the correct direction. Um, yeah, it's sort of like a big, loathsome bear ape pig. Man bear pig. Um... They have had a lot of different lore throughout the history of Dungeons & Dragons. Sometimes they're bruisers. Sometimes they're kind of like bureaucrats. Sometimes they're sort of like evil generals. One of their titles at one point is the Lords of Woe, which I think is pretty metal. But again, it's like, how can you really have bureaucrats in the abyss? Isn't it just sort of like like rampant, wild, ravenous chaos? Um, so that was my challenge in trying to think of how do we redesign this guy. But let's talk about... Thank you, David. They are very important. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the monster here. This is a large fiend. Um, chaotic evil, of course. Uh, 18 armor class, 184 hit points. So 20-foot move speed, so a little slow. But then a 30-foot fly speed. That's right, they have these like tiny little wings. These little comically small wings. Um, okay, stats. Good strength, good con, good intelligence. Um, average dex, average wisdom. Um, four good saving throws, so good con, good int, good wisdom, good charisma. They have um, damage resistances, uh, a bunch of demon resistances. They do have true sight. Uh, they have abyssal and telepathy, um, all of that stuff. They are CR 13. So it's, a, it's a big jump from the Yaklaw, which is CR 10. So you have magic resistance, of course. Um, they have multi-attack, where they can use their horror nimbus, if they can, which is a cool name and a not very interesting power. Um, it then makes three attacks, one with its bite and two with its claws. So we've got the bite attack, obviously deals a big pile of damage. The claw attack deals a little bit less damage. And then the horror Nimbus itself, uh, which is on a recharge 5-6. Then Alfeshni magically emits scintillating multicolored light. Each creature within 15 feet of the Nalfeshni that can see the light must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. A creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. If a creature's saving throw is successful or the effect ends, the creature is immune to the horror nimbus, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's also got teleport, so it magically teleports along with its any equipment it is wearing or carrying up to 120 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. And then, of course, it's got demon summoning, right? So, to me, like, I don't really know, again, like, I feel like you get so many of these monsters that kind of, like, step over each other, right? On concept. Like, the Nelfeshni is powerful. It's the lowest tier demon to get the action teleport. I believe that the Merilith has it. I don't think the Goristro does, but the Baylor has it as well. Um, so it seems like it's in the, like, leadership, right, of, of the Abyss, if you can say that there is such a thing. Um... But beyond that, they don't really have a lot going for them. Um, I kind of like the idea of... I think their coolest power is definitely the horror Nimbus. But it's just a fear effect. And I find fear to be one of the least fun things to happen to your character. Because, you know, if you're a melee character, it almost hoses you more than stun. Like, stun, at least you understand. Like, stun's brutal. No one's to say stun is fun. But at least you understand, like, okay, I can't do anything. Like, fear is like, this is how you feel. You feel this way. You feel scared of it. And, like, that just so, you so rarely are that way, right? You can get into supernatural fear to a certain extent, but I, I just find fear to be an unfun thing to, to role play and an unfun thing to play out. So, I like the idea of it being almost more like, um, like a confusion effect, right? That, like, the horror is the things that it will force you to do. Right, like almost more like a um, like an event horizon kind of a thing, right? The area around the Nalfeshni is just filled with random chaotic behavior. Um, I kind of think that's more interesting, and that there are these sort of like hedonistic, you know, um, uh, plutocrats who kind of flop around and cause all sorts of mayhem. Ooh, like mayhem Nimbus is interesting. Um, we can keep horror Nimbus. I think that's fine as a name. Uh, so that's my main thing. I want to change. I think we'll obviously put in Abyssal Hunger. Um, I like the idea of playing with the notion of them being kind of gluttonous. Maybe they, um, can transform on a higher roll on an 18, like on a 19 to, uh, to, to 20. Might make their abyssal hunger more interesting. 
abyssal they're like ladder climbers right okay so when the now Feshni reduces a creature that isn't a fiend to zero hit points roll 1d20 on a 1 through 18 the now Feshni gains 66 temporary hit points advantage on all attack rolls for one minute and their melee attacks deal an extra one, uh, 3d4 fire damage on a 19 through 20 not with a 19 or 20 or 20 the now Feshni instantly transforms into a type or i think it would just be into a merolith to a merolith uh, i think that's how you spell merolith obviously it doesn't like it because it's not a real word but merolith yep okay cool merolith Awesome. That is Abyssal Hunger. Actually, you know, we'll call it Abyssal Gluttony. Just to make sure that it, people know that it's a different power. Okay. Horror Nimbus. Um, recharge 5-6. The Nalfeshni magically emits scintillating multicolored light. I don't really like that description. Um, each creature within 15 feet of the Nalfeshni that can see it must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Okay, we need a monster with a confusion effect. Um... What is a good confusion monster? Because, like, the spell confusion has it worded a particular way. Um, but I need a monster that does it. Monster with confusion effect. 5e. Sorry if this slows down my stream while I Google something. Um, what's the spell? I want a monster that does it. Um, Can't take reactions and must roll 1d10. Yeah, I don't know a monster that has it. I mean, I know there is somebody that has it. Um, well, let's just pull up confusion and see if we can reword it for the purposes of this ability. Okay, confusion says... Um, do we have a same throw and you can't spell be affected by it? Um, or be charmed for one minute while charmed or a charmed creature. A charmed creature rolls 1d10 at the start of each of its turns to determine its actions, behavior that turn. On a one, the creature uses all of its movement, or the creature moves in a random direction, uses all of its movement to move in a random direction. I wonder if we actually make these a little scarier, right? Like, because the, the standard confusion ones are sort of boring, right? I wonder if we do a thing where it's like, you know, we find a, a scarier way to do this. Like, you know, a creature gets down on its knees and begs for its life. A creature, you know, gibbers incoherently. A creature attacks. Yeah, I think that's interesting. On a one, the creature uses all of its movement. It drops The creature drops prone. Prone and uses all of its movement to crawl in a random direction to crawl in a random direction. On two to six, the creature babbles incoherently and takes no other action. On seven to eight, the creature uses its action to make a melee attack attack against a randomly determined it's a random creature within its reach. Its reach, including itself. 
I think we'll do this. We'll go on two to five and then go six to eight and then go on a 10, the creature does nothing. On a 10, the creature can act and move normally. Um, charmed for one minute. Okay, yeah. I think that's successful, or the effect ends for the creature. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, there's the Horn Nimbus then. Great. Get rid of this. Now, a teleport is confusing to me. I find that to be not a very good power. So here's what I propose that we do. I propose that we make teleport as a bonus action. Now, Feshti magically teleports along the equipment carrying up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. So you reduce it, but you make it a bonus action. So I think that's a pretty shitty action, if I'm all, if I'm honest. Teleport. There we go. The now Feshni, we did it. Hornibus is scarier, weirder. Teleport is a bonus action. It's got abyssal gluttony. Nice. Okay. I think that that is us, everybody. I think that that is the stream. So. Oop, wrong one, sorry. Let's go over what we talked about. Um, we redesigned four demons on this stream, y'all, and we did it in like an hour 15, that's pretty good. Uh, the Hezrao took the most work, we gave it a, a blood walk power, that lets it teleport between creatures. Uh, the Glabrezu, we kind of made it to a manipulator with a, a couple of new spells, some shape changing, attempt power, and uh, a berserk uh, trait. Uh, the Yawclaw was the simplest change. We just removed some of the complexity and made it a big scary spider. Uh, and then the Nalfeshti, we reworked the Horror Nimbus um, and we uh, we moved its teleport. We also gave Abyssal Hunger, uh, some version of it, to all four of these demons. Uh, excellent. So uh, that is our stream, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. If you have not already checked out Monster of the Week, please do so. Um, it is a weekly uh, like talk show podcast where I basically take a monster and I dissect them and try to figure out you know, how to make them more effective in combat. Um, in addition, if you like the video, please, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, make sure that you are following me on my various uh, social media, uh, <laughs> my, so my social meds, um, if you like the kind of content that I make. Um, these monsters are available to our patrons. So if you are even a $1 patron, you can get access to the monsters as I release them. If you're a $5 patron, you can get access to the Trove, which is a big, massive uh, uh, Google Doc, Google Docs folder uh, with all kinds of maps and monsters and mechanics that I have designed uh, for 5th edition for my patrons over the past, God, like three years. Maybe more than that, but closer to five. Um, yeah, and I think that that is everything. We will be back on Saturday. Um, I'll be doing some CFD streaming, though that will be over on our Twitch channel. Um, which is twitch.tv slash prodmtimothy, um, which you should go check that out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I think that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming. Big shout out to everyone who was here, to uh, Hunter and M. Grant and David and Nukerwolf for all your suggestions and help and feedback as we design these. Uh, next week, we'll be back as well on Thursday. We're doing the Demi Lich. Uh, that should be interesting. It's a really cool monster, not one that I had used before. Um, and I'm curious how many people have used it. I wonder if that's... a uh, it seems like a big, important monster, but I don't know that it's actually that popular. I don't know that I've ever seen a Demi Lich in anybody's game, much less uh, in my own. But we'll talk about that next week. There's a lot of cool stuff to do there. Um, great, but until then, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your weekend, uh, Hunter. You enjoy your weekend as well. Um, really appreciate you coming out, and until next time, happy adventuring.